my elders, brothers and sisters. It is with um, immense honor and pleasure that I join you this morning to officiate the 2023 Elders Retreat on the State of Democracy in Africa. When I received this request to be the guest of honor, I told my assistants that regardless of my tight schedule, they must make sure they must have time for me to be amongst you here today. Now being new in this game of leadership, I thought I have to meet the gurus, the Koromas, Kikwetes, and the Hale Mariams, the gurus of the constituency, and learn from them on whether my ship is sailing in the right direction or not. Given the sustained and alarming challenges of democracy, in many of our African countries. Excellencies, I congratulate the organizers of the retreat for the wonderful choice of the venue. I'm happy that retreat, the retreat is taking place for the second time in this great touristic city of Arusha, the home of great Serengeti in Gorongoro, Mount Meru, and the East African community. And hopefully, the home of this platform. It's going to be here in Arusha. <laughs> On a special note, I commend His Excellency Ernest Baikoroma for the leadership of the African Drive for Democracy Initiative. And I wish you, Your Excellency, the best in pursuing the objectives of the initiative. It is through this platform that the wealth of wisdom to inform on democratization agenda on the continent can be harvested. And more importantly, is that the seed you, our elders, are planting through this initiative will germinate into a much needed fountain of wisdom and guidance in support of our collective continental ambitions for an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizens, representing a dynamic force in the international arena. The Africa we want, as stipulated in the Vision 2063. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, the convening of this elders' retreat on the state of democracy in Africa could not be more timely, given the fact that the democratic gains that were made in the past are regressing. Even in democracies that once flourished, we are witnessing the regression. Some statistics note that Africa's 54 states, 25 have experienced scopes attempted coups or dis disruptions to constitutional order since 2010. In addition, it is, a said, it is said to note that according to the International Center for Investigation or Investigative Reporting, the continent has not been safe. And in the, in the past eight years, there have been 21 coups with emergent of new conflict in Sudan, unresolved crisis in West Africa, the Sahel, and discontent in Eastern DRC, which have all led to declining democracy and stalling of governance. And those who speak earlier, who spoke earlier, have said um, some other examples. This situation has been further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, which had negative effects to the economy and to some extent, to, to some extent led to imposed restrictions and elections postponement in some countries. Some of these regret, regressing factors or challenges 
are not our own making. The geopolitical conflicts, pandemics, and climate change have struck a huge blow to the continent in terms of surging food prices, shrinking economic growth, and deceleration in the implementation of the global development aspirations as stipulated in the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development and on the implementation of Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Democracy entails governing in accordance with the will of the people or, the or as the late President Abraham Lincoln suggested, it is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. The people are the central focus and indeed are the architects and ultimate beneficiaries of an inclusive democracy system or democratic system of governance. The currently descending economic trends with heavy uh, debt burden to most of the governments in the continent, resulting in failing to deliver basic services, failing to protect the rights of the most vulnerable and not be able to address historical injustice, including chronic economic inequality, and thus putting to test the very idea of uh, democracy in our continent. Failure by governments to deliver essential public goods has eroded grievances and turmoil in some parts of the continent. Some neglect has also promote, prompted some members of the society to challenge and undermine government authorities by establishing systems that violently express the will of the people. And this is the Wanaharakatis, the terror groups, the Mandamanos, all these uh, have cropped out of um, non-delivery of basic um, social services. And this is where some aspects of democracy, such as freedom of association and freedom of, of expression are negatively used. Now, unless and until African governments address the deficiencies in democratic governance and deliver essential public services to their people, democracy will remain an aspiration never to be meaningfully realized. And let me be very clear here that I don't see an alternative to democracy as a prerequisite to achieve sustainable development and strong economic growth for our countries. For democracy is closely associated with peace, social stability, and rapid socioeconomic development. Excellencies and dear participants, those of us who believe in democracy the most appropriate form of governance must proactively engage with our people towards shared ambition for an Africa with an entrenched, entrenched and flourishing culture of human rights, democracy, gender equality, inclusion and peace. And a continent where prosperity, security and safety for all citizens will be a norm of life. We must build confidence, confident society that will enable participate in the management of public affairs as stipulated under Article 13 of the African Charter and democracy, elections, and governance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for democracy to be meaningful, it needs to translate into improved public services and livelihoods of our people. Democracy should be a best proven means of enabling our people to mobilize, organize, and engage in the governance of their public life. And henceforth, in cognizance of the virtue of democracy, 
and in responding to the call by former President Dr. Kikwete on sustaining the hard-won gains on democracy in Tanzania, and in commemorating 30 years of the reintroduction of multi-party political system in our country, I launched for our agenda for strengthening and consolidating democracy in the country. The first R stands for reconciliation, mainly among political parties, but also other groups in our society. This agenda recognizes the value of reconciliation in, strength, in strengthening national cohesion. Through dialogue and mutual accommodation, we have managed to resolve some of our differences. We have uh, strengthened our unity, and we are now forging ahead as a unified nation and working towards a more peaceful and pro prosperous Tanzania. We'll, we might be having our differences, but then not to the extent of distorting the peace of our nation. The second R stands for reforms. And having realized the shortfalls, Tanzanian government decided to review and improve several policies and legal frameworks, which restricted the participation of our citizens in the democratic processes. Some of the steps taken are removal of the ban of holding uh, political rallies, also review of several legislations, <laughs> review of several legislations with a view to strengthen democratic institutions and processes. Furthermore, in the quest to strengthen democracy and rule of law, the President Commission on Criminal Justice Reforms was formed to look into the performance of our justice institutions so as to effect reforms for better performance. And we have already received the report, which is now under discussion. <laughs> the third R is on resilience. Tanzania is a nation with strong political institutions that have withhold the taste of time. We are building a vibrant economy with an emphasis on increasing competitiveness and achieving industrialization for human development. Our goal is to build a resilient economy that adequately uh, withstand shocks, including financial crisis, pandemics, and other natural calamities such as the effect of climate change. The fourth R is on rebuilding. My government is determined to steer Tanzania into prosperity. This ambition requires us to build our country with a focus on young people who make, who make up the majority of the population. In this regard, the government is investing in human capital development through the provision of lifelong learning skills and job creation. We are also redoubling on investment in agriculture, infrastructure, tourism, mining, and the blue economy as sectors who might um, uh, take a lot of youth um, in their employment. Now, in underpinning the objective of this agenda is our determination to the observance of physical, uh, fiscal discipline reorganization of expenditure patterns, careful planning, and building a dedicated workforce. Dear brothers and sisters, for us who inherited post-independence Africa and enjoyed the fruits of freedom and orderly leadership, shall commit grave mistakes if we leave behind an Africa or African continent that is war-torn, run by unruly leadership, deeply entrenched in poverty with high levels of corruption. So avoiding this, we are coming with several initiatives to make Africa a better place for everyone. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, I'm aware that we'll be spending the next two days engaging with some of the experts 
on the subject of democratic governance led by and led by the co-host the Institute of Security Studies, the Center for Strategic Litigation, MS Training Center for Development Cooperation, Akinamama wa Africa, including myself, International Commission for Juris, Afrobarometer, the Africa Leadership Center, and the Mo Ibrahim Foundation. The Mo Ibrahim, are they here? Okay. I applaud the collaborative effort, and it is for this reason um, that I wish to commend or to commend you for taking this initiative, and so wish to please my own and my government support to this important cause. <clears throat> Excellencies, we in Tanzania bear witness to the value of democratic rule, which is achieved through strong constitutional foundations and an active political culture. We are here to learn from our sisters and brothers from other African countries. And I'm told that among other issues to be discussed here, we'll focus on the following topics. One, ways to elevate the role of citizen in addressing conflicts. Two, proactive and prevent preventive action and early warning signs. Three, renewed commitment to good governance, human rights and democracy. Four, presence of strong and independent monitoring and verification of the continent's democracy. And five, ways to strengthen continental and sub-regional sub bodies in dealing with challenges of democracy. So I'm sure the gurus on these topics are here with us, and fellow Tanzanians are ready to learn from you. From you. Excellencies and distinguished guests, once again, let me applaud the governors, conveners of this elders retreat on the state of democracy in Africa for putting together excellent programs which undoubted, undoubtedly will yield the anticipated results. In Swahili, there's a saying that goes by palipo wazeha paharibiki neno, literally meaning where there are elders, nothing goes wrong. So this this retreat should therefore serve as a platform to deliberate on unfavorable state of affairs and propose practical ways to, of improving the situation, especially in our continent, Africa. Excellencies, in my concluding remarks, it is my sincere hope that in addition to the retreat, you will have an opportunity to visit the beautiful attractions present here in Arusha. I would have loved to remain behind and join you for the entire two days of the retreat. But owing to the other equal exigencies in, of office, I'll not be able to do so. So while wishing you successful deliberation, I also have the honor to declare that the elders retreat on state of democracy in Africa is now officially opened. Thank you. And having said that, my government is eagerly, please be seated. My government is eagerly waiting for, to receive the plan of action to pick some of those issues which we can implement. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>